He's ready. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our friend, Newcastle County Executive Matt Meyer. Thank you. The, it, it, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's good to see everyone here. Sorry, my. I wasted a lot of my voice last night rooting for a baseball team that uh, <laughs> didn't quite come through. And uh, along those lines, when I was a kid, um, you know, I, I was and still I'm a big Eagles fan. And they didn't go to the playoffs too often. And there was one year where they just they they were having a good year and it was not clear if they make the playoffs or not and i was watching every game and following everything and they they made the playoffs and then they played the chicago bears and everyone was waiting for i think it was their first playoff game in a while and uh and there was fog that day and you couldn't see a thing and so you're like for hours people were sitting watching like fog trying to make out the players it was i think it's called the fog bowl now one of the famous game, and that's a little how I feel today. There, uh, there are people here, uh, a lot of them literally here, who've who've worked really hard. Some people who are not here, who've worked really, really hard, uh, spent a lot of time, a lot of taxpayer resources to make sure this this happens. Uh, and I guess it's it's so it's not finished yet. So maybe it's a good thing that you can't you can't see it. Um, but I, I particularly want to call out. Um, Tracy Searles, Kendall Summer, Marco Boyce uh, in Public Works. Let's give them all a round of applause. Thank you for what you do every day. Um, also, uh, Bruce Hunter, Bud Lockhart. I know uh, Frankie uh, Vargas is here. Parking cars. I don't know if anybody else from Oh, Mike, Mike Clendaniel, thank you. Let's give them a round of applause. They work very hard every day. They kind of, I mean, it's kind of typical. They, they, they do whatever the taxpayer asked them to do. Today it was drawing seats, right? You never know what the requirement will be, but you're seriously appreciated. And we appreciate that the burdens of maintaining parks are just increasing, increasing. We have 249 parks. Um, uh, this is going to be 250. Um, I also want to shout out uh, Century Engineering, who's here. There are two people from Century Engineering. Thank you for your work engineering this beautiful property, as well as Simone Collins, uh, Mr. Simone from Simone Collins. Thank you for being here as well, Archi the, the landscape architect for it. Um, I was told when I came into office that when you, when you do big things in the county, you can sort of talk about them, you can get budget for them, you can plan them, but you're not gonna finish them. Um, or you can finish them, but you're finishing the, the, the ideas from the last administration. Uh, we set out when I came into office to do three very specific things south of the canal. I should say that when I campaigned in 2016, one thing I heard a lot from the county in general, but especially down here, is that uh, the southern Newcastle County, the MOT area, felt left out of Newcastle County. They felt like they are paying a lot in taxes and not getting much in return. So when I came into office, we said, well, what is that? We spoke about that in the campaign back six years ago. What does that actually mean? And we decided for us, it would mean a lot of things, but primarily three things. We were going to uh, have, a, have a nice new library down here. We're going to have a nice new paramedic station down here. And we're going to have a nice big park down here. Three things that have been talked about for a while, but the budget had never been allocated and the process had never been followed. I don't think in my wildest dreams, I imagined that we would be able to start and finish all of those projects. Um, so it, it, again, it's a credit to Vanessa Phillips, Chief Administrative Officer, Eric Razor Schramm, the Deputy Chief Administrative Officer, Andrea Allman, my Chief of Staff, and the whole Public Works team, as well as some land use folks who are here all working together on the same page with urgency to get uh, something like this done. I think it was John Muir who said that, that parks are medicine for the soul. Uh, and I think standing out here, you, you get a sense of that, what open space can do. And it's really important as this part of the county gets built out that we, that we do that. I know at groundbreakings, we all wanna know, so when can we actually come here and use it as a, as a park? I don't want to create, um, you know, 
too many false expectations. It's always scary. It's labor and supply. It's a challenging time, but we have the budget. And I think it's fair to say by next summer, we should be in a place where you can come here, play pickleball, play on uh, playgrounds, uh, walk the walking paths and do what, what we're calling phase one of the phase one of the park. Right, Kendall? I haven't said anything too wrong yet. Uh, and phase one is really exciting. Phase two is, is, is additionally exciting. Um, so that's uh, really cool. I, I should add that uh, this is your park, not just you who are here, but the neighbors and community members. We uh, had four public meetings as we did with, with all of these projects I talked about south of the canal and across the, the county. We have four public meetings, over 500 uh, completed surveys. Uh, every single amenity coming in this park um, comes from people who will, who, who will use the park, we hope. So right now behind you in front of me, there are dozens of acres of land that are gonna be protected. They're gonna be put to use for exercise, for re recreation, to keep our residents healthy, maybe most importantly for pickleball. I'm reading right off every single survey response. Yes, pickleball will be in this park. We're debating whether whether the Pickle Palace will be at Glasgow or we'll call this the Pickle Palace, but it is um, coming. Um, it's also gonna be maintained as Tracy, Kendall, and Marco remind me all the time, it's a lot easier to stand up and announce a park like this and build a park, which is a tremendous undertaking, but it's actually a lot easier to do that than maintain it for the months and years and decades to come. And we've made sure we've allocated resources so that well into the future, this park will be maintained and hopefully as time goes on, uh, expanded. This is a team effort. There's been tremendous support um, from county council on this. So uh, you're gonna hear from him uh, in, in a minute, but I also want to recognize Councilman Carter is here. If I'm correct, give Councilman Carter a round of applause. If I'm correct, because of the uh, value of the voters who were, uh, I guess, not living in this park, this, uh, in redistricting, this is no longer in your district, right? It's now in Councilman yeah, Bells. It came in your district. Sorry, it was Councilman Bells. <laughs> Councilman Carter made sure to grab it in redistricting. <laughs> Because the value of the of the dirt that maybe they say what yard signs don't vote. I don't know if dirt. We had nothing to do with it. I don't know. Yeah, the committee that looked at it, and I guess I don't. They say yard signs don't vote. I don't know if dirt does, but I imagine if it did, it would be very happy today. So without further ado, why don't I bring up uh, uh, Kendall or Tracy, someone to come up and talk a little bit about the details of the park. Sorry if we didn't tell you we're doing this, but want to hear more about the park. I'm a little talker. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's great to see you here. Thank you for being here on what I call Big Deal Friday. And I say that jokingly, but it really is a big deal. Um, breaking ground on this park has been a long time coming. When I came to Newcastle County Park System, one of the first things is we need a park in Southern Newcastle County. And after five years, here we are, it's coming to fruition. So this is a, a big deal for Newcastle County Parks who really, other than a couple small pocket parks, has no footprint below the canal. And it's a big deal for the residents of, of MOT, where they finally have a, will finally have a developed large scale park that they can come, enjoy their family, be healthy, be active, and just enjoy being outside. So that's why I'm calling it Big Deal Friday. <laughs> um, so yes, the park is underway starting today with some shovels and it will have a number of amenities, all of which we heard throughout the park's task force meetings and then also through our public meetings and our conceptual planning. It'll include pickleball, tennis courts, basketball courts, an inclusive playground for all to see. I think there's a, a rendering below the mic. Um, and then a perimeter walking path and all the other amenities like parking, um, and benches and those types of amenities within the park. I want to say thank you because I'm very proud of this project because of the way it worked. It worked the way projects are supposed to work, where we do go through a very large public process to see what the people of the area want. And that started with the task force and Ed O'Donnell was the head of the task force. He's here today. I'm, I'm really glad you could join us because this wouldn't have happened 
without all of the work from Ed and the entire task force to really dig down into the details and see where and how the county should invest in parks south of the canal. Um, I also want to thank Peter from Simone Collins who led our efforts in public engagement and conceptual planning and he did so uh, it, it was phenomenal to me to see the response of people that we got. It was evident that people want this in their area, but Peter also had the challenge of doing this public input process through the COVID pandemic. Um, so our first meeting was in person. It was the typical as you go day for planning and then COVID came and we had to reshift and, and Peter didn't miss a beat. So Peter, thank you so much for all your work getting us here. Alex and Emma with Century Engineering are also here. They did all of the design and engineering work to get us from that conceptual plan to where we are today to be able to dig and create this wonderful park that we're gonna have. So Century, thank you so much for all your work here as well. This also wouldn't have been possible without the park staff and the support of Newcastle County. So I wanna recognize both Marco Boyce, who was our lead in the conceptual planning process and also Mike Clendaniel who took it through the design and to the construction phase. So guys, thank you for all your work on this. This park wouldn't be done without you. I have to compete with this. <laughs> um, and also again, needless to say, this wouldn't have, been, wouldn't have been possible without the support of the county executive, county council and the executive office staff. So thank you guys for believing in parks, investing in parks and allowing this to happen. And without further ado, because there's big equipment behind me. <laughs> um, who's next, Ed? Uh, no, Councilman. Councilman Carter. I'll introduce Councilman Carter, who not only is a huge park advocate and pushed for this park to be built, Four. it's his I park. I don't put any pressure on you. <laughs> no, I? but he was, also a, he was also a member of our parks task force. <laughs> Well, thank you. This is uh, truly a delightful day for me. I, uh, I served on two task force for parks. Um, once many years ago when we thought it was going to be on property the county once owned down at St. Anne's. Um, now it's the MOT uh, Little League Field. Um, over 20 years ago I was very active and when I had the opportunity before I was elected to serve on a task force I um, saw it as an opportunity to press really hard and to get it done. Um, an awful lot of people in Southern Newcastle County have been advocating and pressing for this for 25 years that I know of. And uh, to see it finally come to fruition is just truly wonderful. Um, for me, you know, the parks, our libraries, they're really important and more important, I think, right now in Southern Newcastle County than many other areas of the county. You know, one of the, the really great thinkers in planning, Jane Jacobs, when she was looking at city parks, recognized the social value of bringing people together, um, helping us mend our differences and get to know each other better. And as we change so rapidly in Southern Newcastle County, um, that is just something critical. Those of us that serve down here, myself and, and Bill Bell, deal with that changing community every day and different opinions, particularly with people coming from out of state. Um, I'm particularly delighted um, of all the work that was done, our public work staff, um, all of them, you've already heard Tracy and Kendall and, and, and the others mentioned, have just done an incredible job. Um, at the same time, I am putting a little bit of pressure on them to deal with the issues at Wiggins Mill um, and a little bit of pressure on them to make sure that we meet our commitments over um, on the Carter Farm, where the county made a legal agreement for a 40-acre park there that I feel we need to get the master planning done at the same time any plans for that development are approved. And I will do everything I can to make sure that that occurs and, and keep working. I had a meeting with John Tracy in the community just last week um, to make sure that we get there. Um, this is just a wonderful, wonderful thing, but in my view as the councilman serving down here, it's just a start, okay? It's, it, we celebrate, we get it done, we meet those requirements. I know in April, largely to the, with the help of uh, Tracy and Kendall and Mike, we will start with our reforestation of parts of Wiggins Mill and hopefully the master planning for a more passive recreational facility there. 
um, with a lot of environmental benefits and an area that we will meet something that Ed will be able to tell you that our community really wanted. And they wanted an area where they could see big trees in the park in southern Newcastle County. I have, according to Bill McAvoy, white oaks down at Wiggisville that are over 300 years old. Um, beautiful natural area, beautiful thing to do. Um, so we'll keep going on that. I sincerely hope, Matt, that we will see money in the public works budget to help with the Carter Farm planning. I really, really think it's important to at least have enough funds for Marcus and, and Kendall and Mike and Tracy to get that master planning done so that as the community is facing the changes with all this new development, they know what will be on the ground there. And I, uh, I will work um, any way I can to help make sure we get that. Um, so this is exciting. Let's celebrate, even though we can't see it. And think about the vision for other things. You know, I mean, this particular area, um, we had a large discussion of whether we could use this for spray irrigation. Uh, and I think now is the time for us to have a much broader discussion. Next time you drive down Marl Pit Road and see over a thousand acres of county land that may be um, in negotiations uh, for alternative analysis if we decide to use a, a wastewater discharge to the Delaware River and do not need this land for spray irrigation, where we could put something together that has a vision of somebody like um, Olmstead did with Central Park. When there was this little tiny town off on the side called New York City, they built this big park and we could have something on the scale or bigger than um, what we have in Middle Run, for instance. And now is the time to start those discussions, whether or not the county can move and go um, with a a direct river discharge for our wastewater instead of spray irrigation, um, we still have an incredible opportunity to do environmental improvements with a huge, I think, um, unbelievable um, opportunity here for a thousand acres of, of land restoration, incredible water quality improvements, habitat improvements, and those things. And, you know, for me, I think we need to engage and talk about it early. Um, so I'm going to end it there. Um, let's celebrate. Um, Let's uh, enjoy this next summer when it's open, and um, I will keep working to uh, make sure that we get a whole lot more done in the next couple of years. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Carter. As you know, Councilman Bell wanted to be. <coughs> Sorry, those Phillies. Councilman Carter wanted to be here. Uh, I mean, Councilman, Councilman Carter wanted to be here and is here. <laughs> Councilman Bell wanted to be here. Um, but could not be here today. A couple other quick things. Adel Construction is here. I forgot to mention them. As a result, they threatened to drive up, pick up Kendall while she was talking um, to make sure they're there. But Adel Construction is here. It, it, Century is important. Simone Collins is important, but someone's got to build this thing, and Adel Construction will build it. So give them a, a big round of applause so that they'll build it well. Um, it, it, we are... Um, we're very fortunate to have allies in state government who understand county government. In an extreme case, a former county council president is a state senator who has, who really, I think it's fair to say, got in to, to this business in the first place years and years and, and a few years ago uh, over land use issues and over the preservation of land and the preservation of communities just like this. She's now a resident of Middletown. We are in her district and because in part because of her tremendous work and leadership any plants planted here any beautification any landscaping will only be native plants so please welcome senator stephanie hansen thank you i i am very excited to be here here today um, i'm going to keep this short um, mostly because I had my COVID booster and flu shot two days ago, and I'm only firing at about 40% at this point. But I wanted to make sure that I was, I was here and could, um, could be a part of today because I see this like Glasgow Park. This will become the heart of this area just like Glasgow Park is up on Route 40 with really becoming the focus. And the open areas that you see there as well as the, as the courts and the tennis courts and the playgrounds, I mean, this is where people are going to come because we still have a lot of development that's happening here. We've got Bayberry, North Bayberry, South Bayberry, Whitehall, which is continuing to build out tremendously um, and, and all, all around us. So I, I'm so appreciative to the county for bringing this to fruition and for doing it so quickly. 
I mean, like the county executive said, to be able to move as quickly as, as, as you've been able to move with this park has been wonderful. And so I, I truly appreciate it. And all the residents here in this area truly appreciate it. And I took a special look to make sure Look where all the meadows are going to be. The open spaces, which will not be mowed, because that's important. It's important for our environment. And I know that the county executive has a big focus on that. And our wonderful general manager of Public Works, whom I, I, I have the utmost highest respect for, Tracy Searles, that's a big part of that. So thank you all very much for allowing me to say a couple of words and happy to get the park moving. I just wanted to recognize Maddie Ferguson from the Lieutenant Governor's Office is here. Maddie, thank you for, for being here today. Um, this, in, it, 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 to some degree, started with a parks task force that we put together back in 2017. Task force like that are, are our volunteers, and we try to get the best people we can find to come forward in the public interest. Um, the Parks Task Force in particular was tasked, one of the main things was finding where should be the best site for our new Southern Park. It's a hard job, as you can imagine. Um, and a lot of people came forward, they had a lot of public meetings. And Ed O'Donnell, who used to head land use for Newcastle County, has decades and decades of experience in building communities and building stronger communities. We were honored that he raised his hand to chair the, um, the, the part task force, or maybe more <laughs> appropriately, when I asked him to take a few hours each month or each week off fishing to come and run the park task force, he begrudgingly agreed, but he did a fantastic job. I'm not sure we'd be here without Ed O'Donnell's service. So let's hear for Ed O'Donnell. Thank you, Matt, for those uh, kind words. I'd uh, also like to thank you for setting up the, uh, the committee uh, or the task force. Um, at times it was like herding cats, but not, not quite that bad, but it was, it was uh, quite a challenge. I'd also like to thank the members of the uh, uh, task force, some are here with us today, and also the staff from the various uh, county agencies, especially Kendall, who basically gave us some, uh, some good guidance. Um, this is what, five years to get here, okay? so. You are a little bit unique. You're actually started it, and you're gonna see it start to move on, which is not usually the case, as you pointed out. A um, Couple observations. First of all, no one was shy about expressing an opinion, either the task force or the public. I mean, they came out and they gave us, and you know, thanks to uh, Dave Carter, we basically had some surveys run and they weren't shy about what they wanted there. The first thing that came up in that survey, uh, pickleball. <laughs> None of us knew what the heck people were talking about. What is pickleball? There's a whole cult of pickleball people around here, I'm gonna tell you right now. And they must have some really punch to get you know, a, lot, a lot of things done. I think you just improved some parks up north with pickleball courts, if I understand. This area is, is a very unique, the MOT area is very unique, has a different set of challenges, it's fairly complex, but it also has a lot of opportunities. And this starts to be, you know, realize the, the success of some of those opportunities right now with the park system. This is the beginning, this is not the end, you're just starting. Uh, and I think um, uh, everybody was involved in this really deserves a really uh, a, a big hand for trying to get this to this point. Um, again, I want to I want to thank the exec for putting up that task force, and uh, it was it was educational, and it didn't interfere with my fishing too much. You know, I, I made sure of that. Okay, with that, I think we ought to get on with the uh, proceedings here uh, before that machine starts up again and runs us over. Okay, <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Ed. To, to close this out and organize the, uh, the shovel arrangement, I'm gonna call up Vanessa Phillips. Vanessa is someone that maybe not everyone here knows, but when I'm out here talking and shaking hands and giving speeches, Vanessa is actually running the day-to-day -day of county government. She also lives kind of right over there. Am I pointing in the right direction? Yeah, so. Uh, yeah. 
when I have her and Eric Razor Shram talking to me every single day, I had no choice but to get this park because it's it's their neighborhood and they're passionate about. Someone who works very, very hard for you every day, ladies and gentlemen, Vanessa Phillips. Thank you, Matt. And I want to thank you for keeping your promise to the residents here in the MLT area. We are super excited about the Southern Park. It's our 249th park here in the county. And I'm just excited about what my children will be able to do out here starting next summer. Um, also, the library has been great for my family and my friends who are here in the MLT area. So we just wanna welcome everyone to visit our library on Main Street. Um, our staff there is great. And we've done a great job in transitioning from Broad Street to Main Street. At this time, I would like to welcome up our distinguished guests to grab a shovel and a hat. Brian Cunningham is going to help with that process and then we'll take some pictures. But thanks again for your time today. Ready, five, four, three, two, one. Woo! Look at that. That's one good. more, let's go. We do the end. We got a whole field that needs to be done by lunch, so let's go. Five, four, three, two, one. Good stuff. Congratulations. Almost done. Almost done.